remembers that. Okay, we'll go into that later, perhaps. All right? Now, in the, you see portholes of light. You see suns as stars. They are also living entities that breathe and think. So they would also expand and contract. So they would be breathing. So the same thing as the small nucleus that make up these larger uh, principles, they would also expand and contract. Now, when you talk, when you read there in the Holy Tablets and it talks about periods of time, and you read there in the Bible when it talks about the sun, moon, and stars were given in order for us to measure times and seasons, we see there that you're, de you're dealing with the universe, and as it makes a revolution, then you're dealing with galaxies, and as it makes revolution, and you're dealing with a solar system, as it makes revolution. So, as we're coming into the sun cycle, the planet has positioned itself in its own revolution to where now the gravitational pull of the sun is pulling the planet closer to it. And as it pulls it closer to it, it is heating up the planet. So we're receiving a greater force or a non-ether force from the sun. As it goes and further on in 6,000 years from now in an ecliptical orbit, the way the sun will push the planet further away. Right? That would be called a moon cycle. So there's a different force, different energies, different magnetic attractions, gravitational pulls that would be affecting the planet. Thus we call that a sixth ether force. So the same way that that works for the planet, it works for larger scales of the galaxy because they make a motion around the central sun and it also works that same principle on the universe. So when you read there in the Holy Tablets where through time and age, nine ether becomes six ether and then six ether then becomes ghost. So the same way that as this planet in its ecliptical orbit through time, nine ether then transforms into six ether, then into ghost and then nine ether would resurrect again. It's because you're talking about cycles. You follow? When you relate that to cycles, and the cycles how a nucleus of an atom rotates on a grand scale, how the universe will rotate, you will see that all things are done in cycles. So you have periods of time where you have, where it started from that original spark, you see, as a nine ether force through time and age, then it makes a revolution. And then in that revolution, then it goes into a six ether force and then resurrects again. Okay, did that help you out? Yeah, um, and to furthermore with the ghosts, now how does 60 produce ghosts? You would say, because I understand how you came from 90 to become 60 through time and age. How does 60 produce ghosts? Okay. Because someone was telling me before that it was in regards to the physical 60, because I understand there's natures, 90 to natures and 60 to natures and so on and so forth. But I'm saying it was telling me that in regards to the physical 60 to produces ghosts. And, that's, and I'm thinking from the other chapters where it says God is ghost and the etymological etymology of the word God is ghost. So, you know, I'm trying to equate the two and I don't know if it should be equated to. Okay, that's why I took you to on page three of the Holy Tablets when the Waku teaches that there were three creations, all right? Ghost is gases. And it's explained how there's gases. There were nine levels of these gases. You follow? Some of them vibrate at higher frequencies and some of them vibrate at lower. So if you understand that these ghosts are actual gases, you see, and in those gases, it's not emanating the type of force that the ultimate and highest of all of those forces would be emanating, and that would be non-ether. So you have a non-ether as a, as a gaseous force, and that would be in a supreme state, right? And that's where we existed in our supreme state as various gases floating in ether in the universe. Right? And then, through time and age, that, those gases went through another force, which we refer to as six ether. That would be a destructive force. That is the same type of force that a cat's children uses. And then, on into another gaseous stage that they call ghost. That, in order for us to see it and perceive it on the physical game, uh, plane, it's as a uh, fall and as a haze. But you're, you're literally dealing with gases, and it's those nine levels of those gases. You follow? And so ghosts would be the, the, the lightest form. And so for a long time, scientists thought in all fields of scientific endeavor, they agreed that hydrogen was the lightest element in existence. Right? But then the 
smallest minute yeah, like, bottles as the corks, they did exist, but they were not known to exist. You follow? So that was nothing. It didn't sum up to a thing that we could calculate here on the physical plane. So you're talking about those gaseous states of existence that are not calculated here. So we see them in terms of religion, as we have been taught by Apatsi, as the brother Father Ortev explained earlier, right, into those lesser degrees of mystery, and that's how they fed us religion, by removing the essence of the non and then replacing it with religion into those those forces. Next question. Raise your hand. Right back. Right back. I had a question with reference to the Ilium. Ilium 19 Galaxy. Right. Uh, the tri-solar system in the 19th galaxy of Milion. Are there other uh, star systems, uh, constellations within that uh, particular galaxy? Are there? Okay, the book? Yeah, you know what's that? Yeah, um, in the 19th galaxy of Milion, right? Right. Um, we have a tri-solar system, mm -hmm. right, which basically is right in the center. Right. Um, I was just curious whether were there other star clusters or systems or constellations within the 19th galaxy, or is uh, a tri-solar system also referred to as billion? Right, that tri-solar system is billion. You follow me? That tri-solar system is billion, being that it's the 19th galaxy. The 19th of the 19 galaxies, why it was referred to as El Elyum, which does mean the highest. This is going back into the Enuma Elish when it says, when on high, before things were named, or when nothingness was something waiting to be occupied. It was literally saying that for those who need a name for up there, we, Elyum, because they were dealing in a time where they didn't have names. Things just were. You follow me? Things just were. So when you needed to have a name to call that up there, they said Elyum. And, those, and that Elihu was those three stars, Utu, Absu, and Shem. You follow me? So when you say other constellations, star constellations, there would have to be other stars. You follow me? In order for there you know, to be another constellation. But when you see the outskirts where the 19th galaxy is in connection with the 18th galaxy, you're looking at Cyrus. Cyrus is the, is the halfway point between the 19th and the 18th galaxy. That star Cyrus, when you look up in the shadow hour and you see it in Canis Major, that is Ilium and the 18th galaxy. That's their meaning for You follow me? So no, there are no other star constellations in Ilium. And a reference, a reference to this is if you turn to your holy tablets, chapter one, Tablet 6, it's on page 62. And if we read starting from verse 41, the sun was one tremendous mass, a planet called Om. This solar system was one of 19 planets that surrounded a more massive sun called Sa. Saul was named after its original ruler, Saul or Saul, whose wife was named Arena. Their combined rulership gives you the name Salarina or Salarina, shortened to Solar, or simply Solar. This massive sun, Saul, collapsed and exploded outward, and Om got caught in the gravitational pull of Saul and it exploded and gave birth to your son, Shemesh, and 19 of the planets were hurled off into space and exploded to create 19 galaxies in and beyond space. These are your 19 galaxies, which Aliyu was the 19th. So this takes you back to the origin of our universe, which is how this 19 galaxies. Okay. Another quote is in chapter one, this is on page 68. In the 72nd degree, after a universe collapses, 
in its center or contract, it expands, which is an explosion called a big bang, producing the sound ha, from which the word halu, create, comes. This occurrence of contraction and expansion is something that happens all the time, which is also why there is no real line of division between galaxies. They overlap each other the way bubbles connect to each other, just as planes do. Follow that? Thank you. With that answer, I'd like to pass the class over to my brother, Otto Hotel.
we were those children of the Ethiopians. And we set up the land on Atsu, known as Ethiopia. But when we said Ethiopia, we said Eka Utopia. A blissful state where the Ethiopians came to reside. Understood? It's the same thing they did with the Jesus story. They took Haru or Hor or Horus. Understood? Let us read it to you this way. The master teacher teaches us that you had Gim, Geb, and Nut. Nut. Geb and Nut were the children of who? Atum. Atum, Adam. Gab and Nut. You got that so far. Everyone with us? Atum, Adam. From Adam you have who? Pain and from Gab and Nut you have Sutuk, Set, and Asar, or Usir, or Osiris. Cain has a sister named Labuda. Abel has a sister named Achlenia. Cain becomes jealous of his sister's intellect and does not want her to marry the younger brother, Abel, so Cain kills on the Tamaranian side, we had Asaru and Sutuk. Asaru's sister's name was Aset, say that. Where they took in the Greek said Isis. Sutuk had a sister named Neptut, who they called Neptus. Neptus wants to be with Asaru or Usir or Osiris, so Sutuk becomes jealous and kills his brother. On the Cain and Abel side, in order to replace the dead son Abel, another son named Seth is born as a replacement. In the Tamaraian culture, you have a son who to replace the dead son, S-U-N, S-O-N, the father, Asar, who see it, his name is Horus. From Seth, Seth gives birth to the mortals named Elishites. From Haru or Hor or Horus, he is the one who gives birth to the mortals. Which story came first? Which story is written on the walls in the temple of Dendora? And this is what has been the best kept secrets that have been best kept safe for 25,000 years. And so now, the incarnated master, Nietzsche Rafael Atsumre, is here amongst now to give you that information that is necessary to turn you back into deities once again. This is why they fear this information. A Pepsi will do everything in their power to stop us. Overstood? Amen. That's right. That's right, Huba. I would like to ask a brother question in terms of uh, speaking of our uh, uh, getting back to our essence of who we are, and the Barathari land is reaching the higher states, the four higher senses that will put us on a higher level. Is that something that's going to be done physically, or is it something that's going to be done spiritually? Yes, it is something that is done physically. It's a physical operation that has to be done. Remember, there's still corrections that need to be made to the Homo sapiens. When beings came down and were on various projects, right, to see the light, and that's what we have to comprehend. Out of creation, not that some God popped his finger and then things manifested. No, it was a process of the growth in order for these things to come into being. So you did deal with beings from another galaxy, seated, and if they set forth in motion what we refer to in ancient Tamaray as the chain of existence or the chain of life, right? It started from the nucleus of cells, Right? On into higher uh, densities or into bodies. Right? So when they came down for this project, the Adamo project, to see the planet from fungi to algae, and then from algae, and that was referred to as the Nun project. And then on and to protect these beings as they evolved into man, then it became known as the Rainbow Project in order to create the spheres around the planet. You follow? And then on into the Dolphin Project, 
All these were projects that was done by the Nikir or the Anunnaki, as well as the Nomos, that were referred to as uh, the different elements, all of them responsible for the uh, fifth element of creating first the womb of the woman, and then to germinate life here on, on the planet, right? So in order to raise it up to their level of intellect, they gave a portion of themselves to us, and the portion of themselves that they gave to us, right? Some of us inherited the ability of intellect from these parents. So in order for us not to raise up and become independent on our own, they removed this from us. They removed these faculties, which would give us a universal mind. And that was the barataric mind, all right? So then the being responsible for us as an entity was responsible for then educating us and then giving us an etiquette and then indoctrinating us, civilizing us, and indoctrinating us, they called for a doctrine. So we needed one God force because we were misplacing that divine that gave us a connection with the all. So the starting point of us making a declaration, I am in the all and the all is in me, is a stepping stone to get to that principle and that secret connection that we once had in great abundance. You follow? So those true stories that they once gave us, those true stories then turned into myths and to faith and then beliefs. So that was the doctrine to enslave us, myths, faith, and beliefs. So those true stories through time then bred a religion. You follow? Okay, so that essence of what we are that would render us an etheric being or that would give us the Nechatatin, and the Nechatatin would be the demonic, or from heretics, coming from Neoform, language that we spoke in ancient, ancient Tamarite, those would be our seven Ephraim self, on into an Ephraim being as a non. So as they remove the essence from the non, those first being, that gland, right, that gave us psychometry, clairvoyance, intuition, and the ability to communicate with one another without the use of water. And that would be a physical operation that would have to be placed back in. Four question. In terms of the planet shifting back on its original, back from 23 degrees to another axis, is that going to allow any more positive reaction between us as Nubians being not eating the beans on the planet? Okay, first of all, it would not um, shift into another axis, the axis that it was shifted from into a 23 degree axis, it would be shifted back into perpendicular, all right? And that will cause cataclysmic changes, all right? As the planet itself is metamorphosizing from a third density entity into a fourth density entity. And we see, because we physically can see, I don't know if you can see it here in New York, but somebody may be able to verify, you can already see two major planets with the naked eye. That would be Jupiter and Venus lining up here in March of 1999, right on into about 14 months before, according to the Gregorian calendar, that they are supposed to line up all together. You follow? So yes, it will put it, the planet in a, in a state where there is more peace, where there is more essence of the love, because we're going out of the 60s, of course, tied into the question that was asked earlier, or the era that a past see rule. And the now the planet will be governed by another principle. And that's why in 1969, you had a group by the name of the Fifth Dimension, you know, had the number one song at the time, right? The Age of Aquarius. Right? Where they really said that the, when the moon, right, uh, aligns with Mars and peace will guide the planet and love will steer the stars. So we're going into more of a period where the benevolence, right? beings will be ruled, and that's explained there in the Holy Tablets. That's the green light, a new essence is here, other than the red essence for the 60th force. It's, it's a new essence that's here, and that will be governed. So we, to usher in this era, right, a being had been sent, Amanubi Ra'akata, who is the tier of Aferti Atere, qualified by the forces of nature to usher in this. And in order to usher in this era, he had to put the evil one under his feet. You read this in the books of Revelation, 
when it talks about a period of time when Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels, and the dragon's angels prevailed not. And he also taught us, as the different schools that we've been through as Imam Asa, that Melchizedek would have to fight the devil's scene or Shaitan or a pap scene again. And this is what we're doing in this very day and time. We in Eaton, Georgia, are coming against adverse forces. And everyone's being asked. And those forces came out when we erected portions of our Tamaran culture. When we erected the pyramids. When we erected the drum stand and started to reenact a ceremony that it would be the keepers of the night. We enacted when Satuk fought against Horus. And we would be reenacting that. When they saw that, they knew. When we erected the Sphinx, because they knew that the Sphinx then would be a period of time where it would be coming into this information that would put them under our feet. And so then they came out. Remember, in 1996 is from the time in which they lost their reign. Because that was the last year of the 666 that they ruled. That would be the last, and this uh, system works on numbers. You follow? So we're still having these problems right now. That's why all of you who are part of Melchizedek's side to fight against our past children are being asked to war with the pen. Not the sword. Because the thing we found in our struggle is mightier than the sword. How can we research and find technical and energy? Mm -hmm. and, um, Wait a minute. Is that the first question? Yeah. Okay, let me deal with that first. <clears throat> when you're talking about technical and energy, when you look at the word, the phonetic, or etymology, you hear tack on. When you're dealing with the word tachyon, you're talking about glue, the glue that holds the universe together. Tachyon energy is emitted from the pyramid at the angle of 19.5 degrees on the latitude of the planet. The walls of the pyramid, what they do is that they bend light into an emission of SCW, what's known as standard columnar wave, okay, which produces itself in what's the form of a double helix. And this double helix are those tachyon frequencies. Now the trick is that they call tachyon frequencies or tachyon energy, they call it subatomic particles. And they say this is a theoretical subatomic particle, meaning that it is sub Sub-atom is below atom. You know what I mean? It is below the atom, meaning it's a finer particle than the atom. And they theorize it because of the fact that the brother of Mr. Hogan was explaining earlier, it doesn't have a sum. So when you look at it and you hear the word something, and you're taught because of the spell, how to misspell, and you spell it S-O-M-E-T-H-I-N-G, when it is actually an equation, S U.
they say it doesn't exist because there's no number. If one is the light and we go in this direction, not towards two or three, but towards nothingness, then they say it does not exist. But now we are finding information that tells us that there are things that exist within nothingness, but are still considered nothing for the fact that they are.